Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I will be sharing with you things that I got from Shopee. And of course, these are all fountain pens and fountain pen inks. And I will share with you why I got these items despite my already very large collection of pens and inks. So if you're new to this channel, hi, my name is Karen. I'm a lefty who loves fountain pens fountain pen inks, journaling, accessories, habonichis, and all of that good stuff. So, if you like those types of videos, hope you can subscribe to my channel and check out my channel for other related content. So, I'm just unboxing here a converter from Koweiko, and I got two new pens from Jinhao. Jinhao is a Chinese company that also makes fountain pens. And they are relatively affordable and cheaper than your usual Japanese or Western fountain pens. And they suspiciously look like Sailor Pro Gear pens. But surprisingly, they write really well. I have one Jinhao pen that was a gift for me. That's actually my very first fountain pen. And I've decided to try these Jinhao 82s. They're pretty cheap. They're under 300 pesos. And I will share with you why I got these and added these to my collection. So the first color is called Ice Blue. It's white with blue undertones. And the second one is called Blue Lagoon. Although I find it more green than blue. And I especially like the gold detail against the greenish translucent color. And both pens are in the extra fine nib. For the price of 280 pesos, it already comes with a converter. So you can already start inking these fountain pens and right away. So I will bring out my Sailor Pro Gear Slim pens. I just have the black with the gold trim and the white with the rose gold trim. And if you just compare with them, you know, side by side, you can see subtle differences. Like, for example, the band on the cap for the Sailor Pro Gear Slims are just a tad wider than the Jin House. The cap, of course, features the Sailor logo for the Pro Gear Slims. And the bottom is, yeah, they're quite similar. So if you're not really very keen on these small details, you can really have a Jinhao pass for a Sailor Pro Gear Slim. But of course, it depends on you if you really like the Jinhao. The quality is quite okay given the price point. It's really good for those who are beginners and starting their fountain pen journey. And... Watch me struggle as I open these bubble wraps, which have my new fountain pen inks. So I got very tired opening it, it up on camera. So just wait for it and then I'll just do it offline. Alright, so I have here three new inks. And the first one is a Pilot Suwairo meaning it's a pigmented ink it's supposed to be waterproof and you know water resistant and i got the blue black shade i really love the packaging the cardboard is the textured one so it looks really luxurious it looks really high-end and i just have here some literature but it's all in japanese and i think these are the converters for pilot uh, pens so the Tsuairo line is not the regular line which is the water based uh, fountain pen inks so they highly recommend that you don't use the custom Urushi or even their 823 or Pilot Heritage pens because it will be very hard to clean the ink from those pens. 
The second one is a staple in most people's collection, which is a platinum carbon black ink. Platinum is, of course, a Japanese brand. And I wanted to test out how pigmented and how waterproof the ink is. A lot of people swear by this and it comes with a 60 ml bottle. I've tried a lot of permanent or pigmented inks like the Mont Blanc and the Noodlers but the Noodlers didn't work for me because it took a long time for it to dry. So I'm excited to try this out. The Carbon Black Ink from Platinum. And the last one is it's also from Platinum, which is the Pigment Blue Ink. So it also comes in the 60 ml glass bottle. And one thing that I like about the Platinum bottles is that it has like a small reservoir in the middle inside of the bottle that you can use to, you know, get the last remaining bits of the ink. If you've noticed, all of the inks that I got are permanent, waterproof, pigmented inks. And this is coming from my experience on my 5-year TET show, which is meant to, you know, archive and chronicle my daughter's milestones. And the reason why I got these Jinhao 82s is that they will house these permanent pigment inks mainly because I'm too scared to use pigmented inks on my more expensive fountain pens. So with the exception of of course Mont Blanc because they assured us that it's meant for you know the permanent inks in their collection is really meant for their fountain pens so that's an exception but for the other permanent waterproof inks i plan on using just my more affordable cheap pens for them in case something happens it's not as painful so these are just the swatches that i made on my a5 cousin and the first one is a blue black it's from the Pilot Tsuairo collection. And let's just see how it dries. So it's more of a blue ink rather than a black. I mean, leaning towards the blue. And I think it would really look well with, you know, even the extra fine nibs. The next one is the Platinum Carbon Black. And this one, I'm truly excited to try it out. So, yep, that's a very deep pigmented black. But you can see from the edges that as it starts to dry, you know, it becomes more on the gray charcoal side. So it's not as pigmented as, let's say, Heart of Darkness. Noodler's Heart of Darkness is like one of the most black inks I really tried. But my problem with that one is that it takes days to dry so i'm not sure if you guys have the same experience with noodler's heart of darkness or maybe i'm using it wrong but is there a wrong way for you to use those inks and the last swatch is the platinum pigment blue which is a bit light for my liking but it's still a very pleasant medium blue color and i'm thinking of using more broader uh, pens for the pigment blue ink so these are the close-up swatches of the inks that I got and now we will be inking pens and adding more to my bunch of inked pens for this quarter, for this part of the year. So for the Blue Lagoon, I was thinking of using the Roro and Klinger Documentus Green. And then, as you can see, I've assigned my more affordable pens, my Gin House and my Platinum Meteor, to the other permanent waterproof inks. With the exception, of course, of the Platinum 3776, 
Borgon because that one has an architect nib so I decided to just use it for the platinum pigment blue I mean they're the same brand right so what can go wrong so as you can see it has already started to stain part of the barrel of the Jinhao ice blue and you can see some residue over there I'll give you an update if I can remove the stain from there but if not it's no big deal it's only 280 pesos and it really won't hurt my wallet so the next one is a platinum meteor which is also a good starter pen I have it in the fine nib and I thought the platinum carbon black would look great on that pen the third one, I guess this is the most expensive pen out of the four that I'm inking up with permanent inks. And since it's platinum, yeah, there's a bit of peace of mind right there. But it's a 3776 with the architect nib, so it writes broad on downward strokes and it writes finer on horizontal strokes. And the last one, it's the Documentus Green, which I got from the Manila Pen Show. And I think it will work nicely with the Blue Lagoon Jinhao 82. You can see that the cap has some residue there, but I checked, I smelled it. It doesn't smell like molds. Maybe it's some of the properties from the Roru and Klinger. So it's fairly new. I mean, it's sealed when I got it, so I don't think there's contamination there maybe it's just part of that you know how it's made and all the, of the ingredients so here is my ink diary and again just doing writing samples again it's something that I do when I get new pens and new inks I just want to start using them as soon as I get them you know just to already test if it's all working perfectly there won't be any problems issues on the quality and it's still within warranty if i need to have it exchanged so this pen is actually the ice blue not the blue lagoon and i'll just change that up later so the blue black pilot ink works really well with this one even if it's an extra fine nib for this video, I still haven't considered doing a water test. I may do a separate video on that one for all of my permanent and waterproof inks. So the next pen is my lovely Platinum 3776 in the Architect nib. So this one really writes broad. So depending on how you hold the pen, and how you place the nib on the paper you can see the thinness or the broadness of the lines that's why I thought the pigment blue would be the perfect ink for this pen the third one is the platinum meteor in the coral this pen I got from an auction it was for a good cost so I got it for a much higher price than retail and I think the carbon black is really good with the fine nib in this pen so this can be a daily writer something that I can use in the office and it seems like it's a solid black color and the last one is the Jinhao 82 Blue Lagoon. So this is the true Blue Lagoon with the documented screen. Looking at this writing sample, I think that the documented screen would look much better using broader nibs. Well, not really broad, maybe a medium nib would look um, better. Because I find this a bit lighter for my liking but it's a lovely shade of green nonetheless 
and it's something that really complements the color of the Jin Hao pen. So this is how my pens and inks look like after a writing sample on the Tomoe River paper, which is my preferred paper for my fountain pens. So there you have it guys. These are the new pens and inks that I got and I am slowly starting to build my waterproof ink collection. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in my next video. Bye guys!